you have a situation like this where the island has been slowly eroding, we want to try and restore the habitat to make it more resilient for the future. It's the future of Hemp Island that makes these heavy buckets feel a little lighter. Eric Milbrandt and the rest of his team from the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation know it will be years before they see results, but that doesn't stop them. You can put it in front of it. Okay. The team is strategically placing these oyster shells around the island so other oysters will attach to them and pile up. Milbrandt says each oyster will filter up to 50 gallons of water each day, creating a chain reaction for the rest of the local habitat. But also, the oyster reefs will then protect any mangrove propagules or um, other seedlings that start to grow in this area. And eventually, we really want to have the whole island be canopied once again. Besides the heavy lifting, this project has quite a few obstacles. This particular island presents some new uh, challenges. Um, the remoteness of the location is one of the biggest challenges. Another obstacle, collecting all of these clean shells. That's where George Halper with the Florida Fishery Foundation comes in. That's the sound of 1,000 gallons of oyster shells collected by George and his team. In fact, you may have had your hands on these shells at one point. They start here at restaurants like Lobster Lady and the Lazy Flamingo. And your oysters end up here. And bucket by bucket, we're putting them right back into the water. We loaded up about 175 buckets on our little boat, each one hand delivered to Milbrandt and his team. We're working as a team with them on this. This is the first of many, many islands and uh, oyster bars throughout Pine Island Sound and Charlotte Harbor that we're going to be doing. Halper took me on a tour around the island after all of our work was done. Unfortunately, as a retired boat captain, he says the changes to our waterways are blatantly obvious. We're out here at Hemp Key. It's uh, right now about four acres. And before Charlie and Irma, it was about seven acres. He says it's more than just hurricanes. It's freshwater intrusion and red tide blooms that are diminishing our water quality and wiping out marine life. Halper says all of their hard work isn't just for the people who visit Hemp Island. It's for better fishing, leading to better tourism business. And as a single dad, it's for his family too. I don't want them on the computers. I want them out there with their families, enjoying the outdoors. And if the water's clean and the fishing's better, families will be together. Red tide, 